Today, we're putting the world's smallest fishing rod to the test. But there's so many questions behind this 18 inch fishing rod that I know we all are curious about. I mean, will it even cast? Can it handle any big fish? It's whopping two pound fishing line is smaller than a strain of dental floss. But that's besides the point. Not only are we going to be fishing with the world's smallest fishing rod, me and my two friends are going head to head to head to see who the mini rod champion is. The first person to catch three fish on three different lures wins. We all three have our world's smallest rod. This is how it's gonna work, boys. Whoever catches three fish on three different lures wins the challenge. Ooh. The boy Fletch is gonna be on the boat. Ooh. Me and Connor are gonna be on the bank. We're all three gonna split off into three different directions. Like I said, first person to three fish wins. Let's get it, baby. Okay. <laughs> so here's the deal, guys. I've actually used this little rod before and it doesn't cast at all. It is literally not physically possible to cast this rod. So that's why we got the twin troller here behind us. And we're gonna bring this thing out to a pond where we can actually troll around with the micro fishing rod, just put some line outside the back of the boat by hand and we're gonna troll around and we're gonna hook a big end. Believe it or not, I caught a five pounder on this rod before. So hopefully we're gonna repeat that today. If not, even bigger. All right, boys, it is time to put our mini rod to the test. I just pulled up to a spot that uh, has a lot of fish in it and I'm excited to see what we can catch. Our goal is to catch three fish, win this challenge on three different baits. I got a bunch of different ones in this bag I'm gonna take out and show y'all. All right, here we go. We just got out to our first little spot here. I'm gonna run you guys through some of these baits real quick. Before we get deeper into this video, only 27% of y'all watching these videos are actually subscribed. So if you could, take the time, hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel. I'd appreciate it. We're not actually gonna start out with one of these, but we are gonna have to catch some fish on them. But I'm actually thinking about starting off with a wacky rig. We'll definitely move over to those other baits at some point. I just wanna give this wacky rig a shot and see what we can do with it. For our soft plastic of choice, we've got five of these in one color, so we don't have uh, too many options there, but we're gonna go ahead and wacky rig this guy and get into water here. So we got our mini rod, which is just ridiculous. This thing is actually a lot of fun. I'm pumped about it. We have a lure fishing kit here, little micro baits. We have a jerk bait right there. We got a lipless crank bait. We got another jerk bait in chrome and we got two tiny little crank baits on the bottom. I think we're gonna catch a lot of fish on those. And then I also have a couple different lures in here. I have a little sexy shad strike king micro crank bait. I have a chartreuse with the black back micro crank bait. I have another tiny micro crank bait and then a lipless crank bait. So we have plenty of options to choose from. So we're gonna go ahead and rig up and see which one we're gonna use first. We have made it to the pond, guys. It's time to get into this action. Woo! Here we go. Send that on our way. And we are one step closer to securing the dub. Everything else is in the boat. All we need is our little fishing rod here and a little bit of heart, grit, and determination. All right, guys, I think we're going to actually go with the standard sexy shad Bitsy Minnow by Striking. I've actually thrown this in the past and caught a good bit of fish on it, so I'm pretty pumped. This is a perfect crankbait for this micro rod. Fletcher, on the other hand, is gonna be using normal size bass lures. So I'm curious to see how that turns out. It feels so weird tying this bait on, guys. You know what's crazy about these rods is this actually two and a half pound test. So this is probably the smallest line you will ever see me use. And uh, that means we just gotta be extra careful today. We can't be hook setting the fish hard. We won't really need to anyways, because we have treble hooks. We gotta fight these fish, turn our drag down, let them pull, and uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun. So here we go, we are rigged up and ready. Small little Strike King Sexy Shad crankbait, little micro rod. Let's see what we can do here. First things first, we need to check our drag. I honestly think that's perfect. We don't want it too tight, nor do we want it too loose. First order of business, guys, is we gotta put our rally cap on because I forgot sunglasses. Actually, I guess this would be a rally cap. It's more just like a regular hat. But we're not gonna let that stop us from getting the dub. So in order to win this challenge, guys, we gotta catch a fish on three baits. That means we need to get our first one tied on. And I'm thinking we're diving straight into the good stuff. We're gonna go into my crank box. 
and we're gonna grab one of these medium diving crankbaits. I think this is gonna be cash money for getting the job done. Ooh, let's go with the 3XD. I think that is the move. I could throw the 5XD, but I'm really feeling like the 3XD is gonna be the vibe. All right, so we're gonna get a couple little test casts here. You guys would be surprised at how mechanically built, like how well that these little tiny micro rods are built. Me and Adub actually fished with them and we were just impressed, but look at this. I mean, that's not a bad cast at all to be using a pole that's literally a foot long. As far as the reel goes, I want to say this is a, yes, a two five to one gear ratio reel. So you really got to start burning this thing with the crankbait to actually get it to work right. But I don't think we're going to have too much of a problem with that. So in this corner, this is why I picked out the spot. There's actually a feeder and right under this, there's a little bit of current. You got some water getting pumped out under this dock and there should be a lot of fish staged up here. So let's go ahead and uh, start casting around. I don't know if you guys can see that and hear it, but that is all the current that is being flushed out. And there should be a lot of fish in this area. Okay, that might be a little difficult. I just want y'all to prepare yourselves for we get hammered by old pond hog because this reel is about to have a absolute freak out. <laughs> I mean, this thing goes crazy when I crank into one of these guys. It feels like I hooked into a marlin, you know, 100 miles offshore is basically the, the direct correlation. Okay, let's see if I remember how to use this correctly. Oh, we don't want that there. That's not good. That's not good. We have a uh, line stuck inside the actual casing of the reel. That's not what we want at all. Not a good start. Okay, let's try not to let that happen again. Basically, the line just got sucked into the very edge of the spool there, and it got wrapped around the actual gear that cranks this thing. It looks like we're good this time. The line isn't really wrapped up in the spool at all. So that is a good start. Let's get this thing out behind the boat and start trolling. We're just gonna start adventuring all around this pond until we get a giant bite. Let's let that thing get out there behind the boat. It's kind of hard to tell how much line is actually out because this spool's so tiny. Like it's spinning fast, but it might not actually be that much line. It's about half the spool. We're probably going to need the other half to work the fish in because this thing's probably going to go crazy the second I get a bite. I wonder how it's going for the bad guys. There is a monster of a bass right there in the middle. If he eats this, I'm not going to lie, I might be in trouble. Oh, he's eating it. Oh my God, he ate it. <gasps> oh no, I got him. I got a giant bass. I got a giant. I got a giant. Oh. Oh, he's, he's spooling me. Oh my gosh. He's literally spooling me down the bank. Oh, oh, oh. he's trying to shake it with his head. Guys, I'm trying to figure the, the drag. Oh no, he came off. Get a little extra. Oh guys, there, there's bass popping over here. There's bass literally blowing up on Shad. Hello, hello. It's about to go down as soon as we get over there. there. There is a feeding frenzy going on in front of me. I mean, this could happen literally any second for us here, guys. The fall bite is about to be spicy. I'm gonna be honest, boys, with this low gear ratio is actually a lot harder than I was expecting. I'm gonna really have to get down on the water because the problem that we have about this spot, it's beautiful. It looks awesome and it has a lot of places that fish could be. But one of the biggest problems is right here. I mean, you got like a three foot, three and a half foot drop between the water and it's hard to get this crankbait down, especially with the slow gear ratio. I mean, it's a struggle. There's a couple bass. Hold on, man. I see like two or three bass. They're actually really small and they're, they look interested. Oh my gosh. Dude, they're about to eat it. They're about to eat it. Come on. Yeah, they're showing no interest. They definitely see me. That's the one bad part about fishing something where you're so much higher than the water, especially when it's clear, they can just see you. So my big thing that I haven't even thought about yet, guys, if I hook one, how the heck am I gonna get in? Because I'm, oh my gosh, a tiny one right behind me. Come on, eat it. Eat it, baby. Oh man, 
Okay, there's a lot of fish in this area. I haven't seen any big ones yet. But honestly, it's probably better if we hook a smaller one here because I don't want to break my line trying to throw them on the on the dock here. There's still another giant bass right here. I shouldn't even be throwing at them, but I think we at least got to give it another try. I tightened up the drag just slightly. So hopefully, oh my gosh, there's like a five pounder right there. If he eats, he ate it. Oh, I can't set the hook on him. Oh no, he's on. I got him. I got him. That's a that's a big one. No, he spit it out. He spit it out. Hold on, he's eating it again. He ate it. I got him. I got him. No, he snapped me off. What? They see me trolling. These bass hating. Try to catch me trolling my mock bouncer. Try to catch me. Troll my mock bouncer. Troll my mock bouncer. Is that fish? Oh yeah, oh yeah, we are, oh no! You gotta be joshing my tots! Oh my gosh. There's a huge carp, man. Oh, this bass is about to eat me. He's about to eat, oh, he kissed it. He literally, oh, he, he's coming back. I'm just letting it fall. Give a little twitch. Is he getting interested? Come on, baby. They're playing smart, man. I don't need them to be smart right now. I just want them to eat. Get a good cast out there. Oh my gosh, I got a good one fall. You got it, you got it, boys. Oh my gosh, look at that. We are on first fish. We're gonna have to tighten our drag ever so slightly and we're gonna have to fight this fish. We got a bass on. Oh my gosh, there he is. Come on, fish. Oh no, he's going, he's going to the left. Dude, it's actually a nice bass. Oh my God, there's another one. There's another one trying to get it out of his mouth. There's literally a one that's bigger than him right next to him. Oh my gosh. Can you guys see the second fish? Look, he's right up under him. All right, we just gotta keep on fighting him in here. This is a patience game with these mini rods, man. I cannot believe we're already hooked up. I just gotta figure out how to land this fish. That bass is just following him in. Oh my gosh. We're probably gonna try to throw him. Oh no, don't go under the dock, please. Oh no. Come here. No, 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 no. Oh my gosh, he's all the way under the dock. He's all the way. My line's gonna get frayed. My line's actually gonna get frayed, guys. He's like tangling me up. Oh, he's right there. Okay, I don't wanna break this. Oh my gosh, we got him, boys. Let's go, dude. That is our first fish. We are a step closer to winning this challenge. We just need two more bites to catch some more donkeys and that is not a bad bass for that micro crankbait man and there's a lot more right there we might get smoked guys i gotta take them over here and get these pliers to get them off i cannot believe that guys that is sick on the micro rod and we're already on board oh almost put that in my hand there we go guys that is our first fish it's a pretty little largemouth bass and we're gonna get them back in the water thank you baby <laughs> there he goes dude that was sick man let's tie on another bait and get back out there oh wait the fish just moved right there something kind of like flashed that might be oh there's a bass he's going for it he's going for it there's a big bass he's gonna eat it he ate it i got him i got him oh please don't come off oh no 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 he's going around the pylons no oh Oh no, I needed that fish to run the, the opposite way there. Oh, we're on, fish on, fish on, fish on, fish on, fish on. Oh, hold on, hold on, we got one. <laughs> hold on, hold on, is he still on there? Oh no, oh no, oh no. Hold on, hold on, one second guys. We got a one to one gear ratio. This fish should definitely be on here. He's running right at me if he is. Hold up. Believe it or not, the quality of this rod is not is not excellent. I think we might have lost him. No! No! That is so unfortunate. Rats, we got smoke too. <laughs> I guess we're just gonna have to put this thing back out there. See what happens. Alright, so one thing that 
me and Adub learned in his video when using this rod is this line's gonna start tangling up a good bit. So we gotta be very careful here. I don't know if you guys can tell, there's already little ridges in the line. It just gets so knotted up, especially when you start finding these fish on there. So I'm gonna cut off a good bit of this line. Also gotta be careful because we don't have a ton of line. I think I might go with the jerk bait. I wanna go with the lipless, but to be honest, I have another spot that I might wanna hit with that. But I think we're gonna go with the standard little chrome with a black back jerk bait. And I think we might be able to get another one of these bass to eat. There was a ton of fish over there. I know we just happened to catch that fish, but those other ones should bite. But that is the little lure that we're gonna go with second. We might be too low in the water column. I might have to switch lures to like a lipless or maybe like a shallower diving crankbait. We're gonna cut this off and we're gonna get a different crank. So I gotta catch a fish on three different lures. I was thinking one of these deep dive ones would be one of them. And I wasn't really planning on using a square bill, but I think we're gonna start with a square bill instead of that deep diver, because I think this will get down just deep enough and it's not gonna give us too many problems. A little mock bouncer gonna go to town for us. This thing has been delivering some biggins for me recently. All right, boys, second bait of choice, a little chrome jerk bait. I think we're gonna go back over here, man. There's a ton of fish swimming and we might be able to get one of those even bigger bass. A little jerk bait action, man. This thing looks really good. I hear fish jumping behind me. Oh, this jerk bait looks phenomenal. We're gonna get smoked on this thing. What I really like about this jerk bait is it's got that chrome on it. Oh my gosh, there's a good bass right there. He's right here in front of us, man. Oh my gosh, you're gonna eat it. Oh my gosh, watch this. He's gonna eat it. He's literally, he ate it like a top water. He ate it, he ate it, dude, right away. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, man, he's jumping. He is taking off. There's another good bass right below us too. Oh, there he goes. Oh my goodness. All right, come on, fish. Stay pinned, baby. Stay pinned for me. These rods are so funny, man. Oh, he came off. Wait, no, he didn't. He's on, he's on. It's crazy that I have one. Oh my gosh, there's another one with him again. Just like what happened the last time. Dude. Yeah, there's one at least. Oh yeah. Do you guys see that fish right there behind him? Look at how clear this water is. Yep. Yeah. Oh gosh. I can't let him get in the dock. He might try to get it out of his mouth. Oh no, don't, don't pull me under there. Oh, get out of there. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Come on. This dock is scary, man. I barely have him hooked. Okay, baby. I think I'm gonna risk it, guys. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just lift him up. Can this two pound line do it? Come on, baby. There we go, boys. Second bass. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe he ate that jerk bait like a top water too. That was insane. He was aggressive. I definitely caught his eye with that jerk bait. Had a little bit of chrome in it. The sun just came out. It was the perfect color. And that is beautiful. Our second fish, guys. We just need one more bite to secure the dub. We are on a good pace right now. Dude, I do not know what just happened next to me, but that terrified me. I just heard like five women just start screaming bloody murder. Well, boys, there we go. We got two fish. We need one more to secure the dub. We've actually made it to our third spot. And let me tell you, I'm currently not losing hope. I lost that an hour ago. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But I'm just gonna throw the wacky rig for a little bit here. And if I don't get any bites or if I hook up to another one and he comes off, I'm gonna just go ahead and switch up to like one of those crank crankbait style baits. I feel like with those, I'll honestly have better luck just because the hooks are smaller. I should be able to actually get it in that fish a little bit better. So let's see what we can do. All right, so this is what I was talking about earlier. See all that line? That is just, nah, that is not what you want. So we're gonna go ahead and cut a little bit more line off of this. We just can't risk for that to get knotted up even more. So we're gonna cut that off. We have the micro square bill already knocked off the list. We got the micro jerk bait knocked off the list. I think really the last bait that we would wanna catch a fish on is the lipless crankbait. You know, we have these other two micro crankbaits that we could definitely use, but I kinda wanna try this just because it's different. 
and I want to go back down there by that feeder where that natural water's coming in. And this lipless, I can actually let sink to the bottom and I can just jig it. I think it's going to be perfect for that spot and we might be able to catch a different species. Since you're not down and we are good to go. Boys, I also cannot believe that I was able to just lift that fish up on this two pound line. As I was doing it, I was just thinking in my head, I'm like, I'm about to break this. Like there, there's just no way, like I'm about to break this two pound line. But sure enough, it was strong enough to get that fish up. It wasn't like he was a big fish. I mean, he was only about a pound. And I don't know if you guys see this right here. Got a whole school of mini bass right there. I don't even want to catch this though. I want to go in this corner and see one, if we can catch something bigger. And two, if we can catch a different species. Shiver me timbers. Oh, is that fish? Oh yeah, we're on, we're on, we're on. Stay on, stay on. Got that hook set this time. Oh, 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 oh my gosh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Come on in here. He's running at me, Julie. Stay on, stay on, stay on, stay on. Stay on. Keep that tension. Keep that tension. Ah! <laughs> oh my gosh. We done did it, guys. Bait number one. I knew the bait switch up was the move. We got ourselves out of there at Lodge, y'all. Oh, whoa, whoa. Easy, Nelly. Easy. Easy. Oh, I don't even know how far out she is. We cut off a decent amount of line, so I'm not really sure how much we got left on here. <gasps> Gotta get them. You know, like the offshore style. Lean into them, crank down. Lean into them, crank down. She's gotta be at least 10 pounds. Oh, 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 she's under the boat. She's under the boat. She's under the boat. Oh, come on up here. Come on up here. Come on. Oh! I think she's here. There we go, guys. Fish number one and bait number one. Finally got us a nice large jaw. Not a monster, but a respectable size nevertheless. Give me some pliers and let's get this sucker unhooked and get our second bait tied on. There we go. All right. <laughs> Not too bad. Thanks for the bite, baby. There she goes. <laughs> she, that little smaller bass put up a huge fight on this rod. It feels so funny trying to reel them in on this thing. It's so awkward. I'm thinking we're going two tap this time, guys. Two tap's gotta be the move. It's gonna help deliver us the gold today. The old trusty two tap, and this one has been beat to death. So you can tell that this thing gets the job done and the fish love it. Bait number two, tied all up. Let's get her out, let's just rinse and repeat. You can't tell me though, that grass edge just looks primed. Primed for a big fat juicy mama to be sitting on. Oh, oh I got him. Oh, I got him. That might be a big fish. Where's he going? Come on, baby. Oh my gosh. Oh no, no. <laughs> All right, we're on plan C. I don't know what we're on now. We're on plan Z, we're, we're that far into this, but we're actually gonna tie on this little micro, uh, yeah, strike king. This one should get us eaten. It's so awkward fishing this thing, guys, because one, I mean, you're fishing with a pole that's like 12 inches long, and two, you're having to reel the dang thing so fast, and your bait just doesn't want to run right. I mean, <laughs> it's like you don't have enough torque in there to just get that bait to ride. Hoping one of these bluegill are about to slam this thing. Seems like I'm reeling at 100 miles an hour. I promise it's not really going that fast. I'm curious to see how Connor and Fletcher's doing. I don't know what's going on. None of them have called me yet, so nobody's caught three just about yet. Oh my gosh, right away. Literally right away. Holy smokes. Fish number two. Fish number two. That took no time at all. The two tap was always delivering. Oh, she's running on me. She's running on me. She's running on me. Oh, come on. She get off? She get off? Oh no, she's still on there. She's still tugging. I just got a ton of slack out. She's running straight underneath the boat. 
Oh, oh my gosh. Whoa! <laughs> oh, God. Gotta let her run. We got light light on here. Try to give her as much room as she needs. 2,000 years later. I think my real drag system is destroyed now. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This one's got a lot of life in her. She's a lively son of a gun. Just don't want to break this line. I think it's like probably like six or eight pound test. And I don't know what the size of this fish is yet. Whoa! <laughs> oh, come on, come on. Get on up here. Get on up here. There she comes. There she comes. Whoa! Easy now. Oh, oh, you want one more run? You can have it if you want it. I'll get it to you. Don't you worry. Flip her on in. <laughs> How about that, guys? Get a little bit better. Two baits down. That happened like instantly. First time trying to put the bait out. We didn't even get it all the way out the back of the boat. We got slammed. Should have started with the two tap. Boom. Check her out. That's fish number two. Let y'all go. Oh yeah, she's whipping. We got one. We got one. See that? I got the fastest fingers in the west right there. I don't know what I got though. Might be a. Is that a? I can't tell if it's a bass or not. I don't, I'm not sure what it is. Come on, baby. Stay on. Stay on, stay on. Ooh, she's getting a little feisty on us. Come on, baby. Oh, we got a brim. I think we got a brim. Still learning the uh, drag on this thing, but hey, it works. And that's what I'm talking about. It finally paid off. We switched it up. Switched it up to a little bit of a different strategy there. And it worked out for us. We go get this guy off and we need to get onto our second bait here. There we go. It's honestly a pretty giant bluegill there. Well, thank you, buddy. Uh, quick release. All right, boys, we just need this one bite, man. It's being tough on us. I know some of these giant bluegill are here. Just getting one of these things to bite is the tricky part. I want to throw up there, right up there by that current. That is money. We should get slammed right there. Come on, fishy. Come on. You know what? What if we just vertically drop it and just jig this thing? I just know there's fish down there with all that current. It just makes sense. <sighs> yep, just like that. Oh, it's a massive one. It's a massive bluegill, boys. It is a massive blue. Oh my gosh, look at him. Literally vertically jigging this thing. Oh my gosh, that is one of the biggest bluegill I've ever seen. That is one of the biggest bluegill. Look, oh my gosh, look at that thing. Look at that thing, baby, look at that. Oh my gosh. And that is the third and final fish to complete the challenge. Oh my goodness. Look at how large that bluegill is. Look at it compared to my hand, it and it's not even close. This thing is ridiculous. Look at that beautiful bluegill. Look at the colors, just the markings on him, everything about that fish. Is just awesome, and that is the challenge winner. I appreciate you for biting, buddy. 